Hello class, welcome to our lecture today on normal random variables. So take a look here, we have two learning outcomes for the day and the first one is to be able to describe key characteristics of a normal distribution. Second one is to compute a z-score. So you're thinking normal distribution sounds really familiar, correct? So if you remember from the first or second week of the semester, we went over the empirical rule right, which is the 6895 99.7 distribution. So we're going deeper into a normal distribution and what you know about the empirical rule today. So let me give you a little background about the normal distribution. If you remember from our first exam, I asked you, what is another name for a normal distribution? And that answer is a Gaussian distribution because this distribution, similar to a lot of the other models you're going to learn in statistics, is named from the founder. So the person who discovered the normal distribution is Carl Gauss. So that's why it's also commonly known as the Gaussian distribution. So it's a remarkable person from Germany. He was a child prodigy at the age of three. He found accounting errors in his father's books and helped him correct it. So you can imagine by the time he found the normal distribution later in life, he had already accomplished a lot of other models you see in physics and in math. So let's go back to thinking about what we know about normal distribution. Okay, you're, you have that image in mind of what a normal distribution looks like. And let me just scroll down and show you. So there is that beautiful bell-shaped distribution. And right on top here, you have, I have a question where it says, what's a good SAT score? Right, you're thinking, if you remember when you received your SAT score, it gives you your score and how that performance is relative to the rest of the country. Do you remember? Looking at percentiles and standard deviations. And we love to use standardized testing as an example of the application of a normal distribution because when you map out, when you look at the distribution of all possible scores in the United States, of all possible learners who take the SATs, it's going to look very much like a normal distribution. In fact, we expect to see a normal distribution. And so there are several applications of this normal distribution, right? If you get a score that tells you you're in the 50th percentile, then you know, just based on your current understanding of a normal distribution, that you are going to be somewhere here, right down the center, around where the 50th percentile is, right? Around where the mean is, because you also understand that when you have a normal distribution, Another key characteristic of it is that the mean is equivalent to the median, the 50th percentile. Or if it's roughly normal, then the mean's going to be almost similar to the median. So what, even if you don't graph out your data, you can take a look at those two characteristics and say, well, is the mean roughly equal to the median? That would be your indicator to you what kind of distribution you have. Let's say you're in a hurry and you need to know quickly what your data looks like and you don't have time to make a histogram. So that's a good indicator. Now going back to this SAT score example. So if you're someone who scored three standard deviations above the mean, because of your understanding of a normal distribution, then when you get that report and you know that you are three standard deviations above, you're sitting right here. So that means you beat out all of this area to the left of you, correct? So at about three standard deviations above the mean, where the mean is at the dead center, then you know that you've outscored 99.7% of other takers of the, of the standardized score test. And we love to talk about normal distributions in statistics because this is the easiest distribution to use. So in the real world, once you're out there working, you actually really would prefer if your data would resemble that of a normal distribution because it's very easy to compute probabilities of something happening. Remember, your ultimate job is to make an informed decision or prediction about the future. So if you have a probability function that's 
very predictable and you understand it fully, that gives you so much power to make accurate predictions. So can you think of other applications of a normal distribution? So we talked about SAT scores as a common one or GREs if you plan to take the graduate entrance exam, but there are other things that you can think of. If you think of women's shoe size, say, in the United States, and you map it out, that distribution would also resemble that of a normal distribution. So here I want you to pause the lecture and think, well, what are some other examples that you can relate to personally, that you have a passion about? So now that you have your example, let's see what exactly we can utilize with our normal distribution. So a few more things we want to learn about the normal distribution. Here on this side, you see there is a histogram, right? A histogram is a graph of a continuous random variable. And you see that beautiful curve that we love in normal distribution. So here in real life, when you have data, it's going to look like the columns in the back making that histogram. And your computer system, whatever you decide to use, will generate a bell curve. So you can kind of see that this data is roughly normal. It looks pretty normal, it has that bow shaped distribution. I really won't be surprised if you compute the mean, and it's gonna be roughly equal to the median. Now second here, you're going to see that the normal distribution, it's also known as a probability density curve. So you wanna think about this, that everything under this curve is a area. So if you've taken calculus, if you remember something from calculus, it tells you that everything under the curve has an area of what? Do you remember? It has an area of one. So this feature about the normal distribution is really powerful. It's going to help us compute probabilities relating to where you are relative to other points in the data. So here I'm going to draw out for you to see what I'm talking about relating to probability density curve. So here, let's say you found your SAT score. You think you're going to be somewhere between the median and maybe one standard deviation above the mean. Then using this model, this density curve that's shaped like a normal distribution, you're able to compute the probability of how likely someone is to score between these two points. Or another way to say this is you are able, you have the tool to say, you know the proportion of learners, you know the proportion of students who will score between X and Y, that second line here. So that's what we do with a normal distribution. So let's take a look at how to get from knowing the distance and then finding the corresponding probability. The first thing you want to do here is to translate it to a statistical language, right? Learning statistics is like learning a new language. You want to use the appropriate jargon. In this case, you want to use the appropriate statistical symbol to represent what you're trying to do here. So to find that probability, your first job is to compute a standardized score, also known as a z-score. A z-score notify as z. To compute a z-score, you would take your raw value, x, minus the mean, mu, divided by the standard deviation, sigma, to find a z-score. So let's try an example on how to compute a z-score. So this is the first step in finding corresponding probabilities of two points that you're interested in. So suppose that for SAT scores on the math section, it follows a normal distribution with this mean and this standard deviation. You would take a raw value of 16. Say somebody scores 16, then that corresponding z-score would be 600, 600 minus 515, which is the mean, divided by the standard deviation. And here you have a z-score of 0.85. So to conclude, today we revisit the empirical rule. We learned some key characteristics of a normal distribution and learn how to compute a z-score. I want you to take 60 seconds to write down three things you learned. 